So today I'm talking about a P2509 code, what it is and how you can go about fixing it. And so what is a P2509 code? Well, it's an ECM slash PCM power input signal intermittent. And so what does this mean? Well, basically modern vehicles have computers built into them that's controlling different functions. And the main computer inside the vehicle is gonna be called a PCM or an ECM. When a vehicle has an ECM or engine control module, it usually has other control modules that are controlling other things. So for example, the engine control module would just be controlling the engine. A transmission control module would just be controlling the transmission. When a vehicle has a PCM, usually that means that they're combining other functions into one computer. So instead of an ECM for the engine and a TCM for the transmission, they'll just all be built into one computer called the powertrain control module. Although there can be differences, there can be different things going on with vehicles. But basically a PCM or ECM is the main computer inside the vehicle. And when you get this P2509 code, the computer's seeing some kind of problem with the power going to that main computer. And so it's going to be troubleshooted to know why. And so what would be some possible causes of a P2509 code? Well, the first thing that's going to cause this is any kind of issue going on with the power supply going to the computer. So this is going to be any kind of issue like with the alternator, the battery, a bad voltage regulator, something along those lines. And so the first thing to go and do is check out your battery terminals. Be sure they're connected good. It doesn't look like there's a lot of corrosion going on or anything like this. Because if you've got any bad connections or any kind of corrosion going on with those terminals, then that's going to cause problems. If you have a multimeter, you can also go and test the alternator output and check to see if it's correct. And basically to go and check the alternator, you just set your meter to DC volts, you check to see what the battery voltage is with the engine off, and that'll usually be like right around 12.20 to 12.50, somewhere around there. And then with everything still connected, you start up the engine, and when the engine starts, the alternator will start outputting, and that'll usually be like right around like 14 to 14 and a half volts. You can look up what your specific alternator is supposed to be outputting, and then match that and be sure that it's correct. But most alternators usually output like 14 to 14 and a half volts. If that meter is reading like 12 volts still, then you know it's not outputting correctly. Or if it goes over that, if it starts saying like 15 or 16 volts or something like that, then it's overcharging. You know there's some kind of issue going on there. But the first thing that could cause this is some kind of power supply problem. And the next thing that could cause this is a blowing fuse. And so it's a good idea to go check the fuses. And this is going to include any kind of computer-related fuse. And so look for anything like ECM, PCM, ECU, anything along these lines. Because if there's a blowing fuse, then that's going to cause problems. So the next thing to do is go and check and be sure the fuses are good. And the next thing that could cause this is that there's some kind of problem going on inside the wiring. And that's causing some kind of voltage drop. And so this is going to be something like a circuit problem or possibly a bad component that when it powers on, then it causes a voltage drop and that causes a problem with the computer. It affects the power going to the computer. So for example, say you turned on the headlights and all of a sudden the engine light came on, you go and check the codes, you get this P2509 code, then you know there's going to be some kind of issue going on with the lights and that's causing a voltage drop. Well, this can also be inside the wiring going to the ECM or the PCM. Sometimes these wires can like rub on metal or something like that, and they can get it open or short. Also, sometimes these plugs, they can become loose where they need to be pulled out and pushed back in real good, or a pin on one of the wires going to the plug, they can become loose, things along these lines. But basically, the next thing that could cause this is some kind of wiring issue that's causing a voltage drop going to the computers. And the last thing on the list can be a bad computer. And so this can be like a bad PCM or a bad ECM. And basically the computer's just gone bad, but this isn't too common. Usually when you get a P2509 code, it's going to be something else. But it is possible something's gone wrong with the computer. One thing you can do if you do think it's a bad computer is if you could go around it and check to see if you smell the burnt smell. Sometimes you can even open it up and check to see if you see any burnt components on it. Because it is common when these computers do go bad, they get some kind of burnt component on them. Although they can fail, you don't see no burnt components. And they can't go bad and you don't see nothing burnt. But if you do smell a burnt smell around them, then that can't be a sign that there is some kind of issue going on with that computer and that it has gone bad. Because the last thing on the list is going to be a bad computer. And so that's basically it. I just wanted to give a basic overview of how you go about fixing a vehicle with the P2509 code. If you have anything to add, please comment down below. If you have any questions, ask me and I'll try to answer them. If this video helps you, please click like, please click subscribe, and have a good day.